Spike. Chair Eisenberg, members of council, uh, good afternoon. Uh, primarily, I want to suggest to you that you should take the NRDC or portfolio approach seriously, uh, but I'd like to make uh, brief comments on two other issues that have come up during the day first. I'll try to be brief. I'd be delighted to talk at greater length to staff uh, and or to make presentations to council on these matters involving... Uh, uh, levies and soil properties on which there seems to be some misinformation. Uh, relative to Dr. Goodwin's report on conversations with two professors from UCLA, uh, I'm just a simple soils engineer from Australia. I'm not a professor at the University of California, uh, let alone a department chair. Um, uh, but these are the facts. Uh, my friends John Stewart and Scott Brandenburg from UCLA uh, did an experiment at Sherman Island in which they expected the peat materials in the foundation of their test embankment to fail. They did not fail. They repeated the experiment with a higher water table, being pretty sure that it would then fail. It did not fail. Uh, Unfortunately, John and Scott had not read the literature. Uh, there was some reference to there not being literature on the behavior of peat. Uh, that's not true. Uh, I had one or more uh, volumes of symposium proceedings, which uh, I no longer have because I donated them to UC Davis. Ross Bullinger at UC Davis, as part of the Dream Study, uh, did very nice testing of uh, behavior of peat under cyclic loadings. If you read those papers, you would not expect that test embankment to fail. Uh, those papers indicate that while peat is very compressible under static loadings, uh, it does very well under cyclic loadings. Uh, so the, ex the, the result that they found from the test was not what they expected, but it was expectable in view of what other people know about the behavior of peat. Uh, so now they've discovered a phenomenon that's called secondary compression. Uh, it's basic soil mechanics, been around for years. Uh, the late Roger Foote and uh, his professor Chuck Ladd wrote a, a hallmark paper on uh, settlement, secondary compression of peat under levees in the Atchafalaya Basin. Uh, it is the reason that delta levees keep on sinking secondary compression, known to every Delta farmer and engineer. Uh, two points from Dr. Merrill Smooth's presentation, uh, read the BDCP. Uh, Jerry and I were in graduate school at Cal at the same time, uh, but I never saw him in the civil engineering building. Uh, he was ill-advised to throw out something about sea level rise causing unacceptable increases in the pressure on levees. That, I think, comes from uh, the well-known paper by uh, Mountain Twiss, uh, Bob Twiss having been one of my advisors back in those days. Uh, but uh, the increase in pressure on levees caused by even a 55-inch rise in sea level is manageable. Uh, even a... Uh, an effective height levy of 50 feet is nothing compared to a 600-foot-high embankment dam. And uh, in Southern California, there are a million people who live in the floodplain of the Santa Ana River uh, below Seven Oaks Dam, which is 550, 600 feet high, uh, on, for which I have some certificate of acknowledgement from the Corps of Engineers. Uh, uh, these things can be engineered. Uh, Jerry is correct about the threat posed by more extreme floods. Uh, the article that was referenced from Scientific American is quite a good article, um, although their return period is probably more like 250 to 300 years. I think Jerry gave a shorter interval. Uh, not necessarily correct in assuming that uh, such super storms and floods would wipe out the delta for two reasons. One is that in such an event as in 1861, uh, you get uh, an inland sea in both the Sacramento and San Joaquin valleys, which add significantly to the retention time. Uh, that's bad for Natomas, Sacramento, but good for the delta. 
Second reason is that the Economic Sustainability Plan of the Delta Protection Commission recommends further improvement in Delta levees to cope with 500-year return period events, both floods and earthquakes. Um, on the other hand, the $17 billion uh, Central Valley Flood Protection Plan uh, raises urban levies only to 200-year protection and non-urban levies to 100-year protection. Uh, so uh, the figure that's cited in the Economic Sustainability Plan of 2 to $4 billion for raising delta levies to make them uh, robust under flood, seismic, and sea level rise seems like a relatively small number compared to $17 billion for uh, CVFPP or $14 billion plus for BDCP. Uh, neither the Central Valley Flood Protection Plan, the Delta Plan, or the BDCP satisfactorily address the possibility of six-year droughts, well, which I judge to be about have a return period of about 100 years, although Dr. Cartrell thinks it might be more like 50 years, or a superstorm every 300 years. This is a major omission of, of, of this uh, long-term planning. Read the uh, NRDC or the portfolio approach. Um, it seems to me that this is a serious attempt to address the co-equal goals and must be considered. Uh, I think there are other, even better plans uh, uh, that more seriously address uh, restoring a natural flow regime in the Delta and do much more for San Joaquin Valley farmers who are kind of left out of the portfolio approach, but it is a, nonetheless a serious attempt and it should be considered. Uh, here's, here's the big question that I'd leave you with. Uh, uh, the Delta Reform Act, uh, Section 85.320, little b, 2, big B, uh, which has already been referred to, uh, says that one of the criteria that you, the council, have to consider in uh, in judging whether you include the BDCP in the Delta Plan is that they have studied a reasonable range of Delta conveyance alternatives, including blah, blah, blah. Uh, uh, you don't have to do that study. The BDCP has to do that study. Uh, so uh, are you going to tell them today what you think is a reasonable range of alternatives uh, or are you going to wait until they're done and then ding them and carry out your statutory obligation to refuse to include the BDCP in the Delta Plan. Uh, I make the distinction between this and your appellate role, which is relative to the NCCP. And so I know from previously working with staff that at least some of them are terribly nervous about infringing on your future appellate role. But taking a more formal position or exercising a bolder approach in your uh, responsible agency role, uh, indicating to the BDCP at this time what you think should be included in a reasonable range of alternatives uh, seems to me to be not in conflict with that appellate role and otherwise a good idea. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you, Mr. Pike. Uh, Mr.